Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I am the senior pastor of Promised Land Ministries in beautiful uh, coming Georgia. Welcome to another broadcast of the Promised Land Ministries Network. I am so excited to be with you and thank you for all the love that you showed uh, me and my wife, Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie and I, while we were on vacation, thank you for the prayers. As you can see from the special thanks video, she's doing quite well. So <laughs> uh, she still recovers, got a little bandage there, but she's still doing well and, and, and she sends her prayers with you. So let's go ahead and pray and get into uh, the series that we've been teaching, which I'm just so excited about. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord God. We praise you. We lift you up, Lord God. We lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you're going to speak to us and feed us your word. And Lord God, we know that you're Jesus. We know that you're here because if your word says, if two or more of us shall gather in your name, there you are in the midst. We know that you're here and you're welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are in a series called The Good Fight of Faith. The Good Fight of Faith. And this series is, let me move up some. <laughs> this series is hopefully encouraging you um, that, that just because there's a struggle in your life does not mean that that is not meant for you. Sometimes God allows struggle in your life and, and there are certain things that God promise, promises you that are contingent on you standing and fighting for that. So I'm teaching you, this series is teaching you now how to fight and how to stand in the word of God and see the results. Uh, maybe you're stuck in some areas. Maybe there's some areas of where you lack direction. Maybe there's some areas where you feel tired and it's taking too long. Uh, hopefully this series will get things moving along for you. Amen. So let's go ahead and we're going to go um, um, to here. We're going to go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 is where we're going to go today. And we're going to be moving about a bit. Um, I didn't want to step on my message for Wednesday, but... Um, we'll see how it goes here. And we're going to go and move. And this this is, again, um, a series called The Good Fight of Faith. This one's going to be a, um, the prayer part of spiritual warfare. The prayer part of spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. The prayer part of spiritual warfare. And we're going to come at it a bit different here. So as always, as your pastor, I always tell you that uh, before you even start indulging in listening to this great spiritual meal, I believe it is, uh, make sure you have your Bible with you. Make sure you have your notes. Unless you're doing something like cooking dinner or driving and you it requires your hands or just kind of laying in bed. Yes, but try to try to discipline yourself to get into the Word of God and get in with notes. Amen? So that you can have something when you're spending time with God as I always say, that you're going to have something that God can hopefully expound on, especially for you new Christians. What I did as a new Christian, I just kept devouring the word, kept staying in the scripture, kept listening to back then tapes, and just kept rolling it around for hours. And I'm talking about 16, 17, 18, almost every waking hour, I would just do that for like years and just got the word in my spirit. Amen. So let's go ahead and read this. 2 Timothy chapter 10. I'm going to go to verse 1 on down. Now, I, Paul, myself, pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who is in presence, who is in, in presence and am lowly among you and being absent among bold and um, am bold, bold towards you. But I beg you when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to um, be bold against some who think of us as if we are walking according to the flesh. So that means here he's saying, okay, hey, look, you know, I'm bold when I'm writing, but don't expect this brash, loud, pushy, arrogant person when you see me in 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 um in face to face because that's a boldness in the spirit. How many of you know that you can have oh your I mean that's a boldness in your flesh. How many of you know that a lot of times the world wants uh even this nation a lot of times they consider confident people, people who overtalk people, people who push themselves a certain way and they consider that being bold and God considers it arrogant and, and, and so Apostle Paul says I'm meek you know so that means I might write bold I might write with passion just like I might preach with passion but a lot of times people who preach boldly when they come behind when they get off of the cameras they handle their life meekly amen so they're bold spiritually they're bold in their prayers they're bold in their faith they're bold in their proclamation of Jesus Christ they're bold in the things of God 
But they don't have to be bold as in, if you treat me a certain way, that's what you're going to get. If you did, I, I'm known for it. If you want to come to me like that, I'm going to come at you to double that. That's not bold. That's flesh. Amen. And so he makes a distinction here. Verse four here. He says, and he encourages, he says this, he says this. He says, verse three here, for we walk not in the flesh and we do not war according to the flesh. He says, we don't walk in the flesh and we don't war or we don't, we do not war according to the flesh. I don't, I don't walk in the flesh. That means I don't live in my flesh. What does that mean? I don't make my decisions based on emotions. I don't respond to you based on emotions. You get what you give. Y'all, I'm giving you is what you gave me. We don't do that. We don't respond in our flesh now, and we don't war. What does that mean? We don't contend with anything or anyone in our flesh. Somebody cuts you off uh, going on the highway. You don't flip them a bird and cuss them back out or something like that. You don't war after them. Uh, Jesus tells you to pray for those who despitefully use you. You don't war, or turn the other cheek. You don't war after the flesh. You don't walk in the flesh. That means you don't live in the flesh and you don't handle your problems. War means you don't handle your problems in the flesh. Amen. So look at your neighbor and say that when you uh, live in the spirit and when you handle your problems in the spirit, you're inviting God into your life and into your problem. Amen. When you live after you walk in the flesh, when you walk in the spirit, and you war or you contend in the spirit, you're handling things God's way. And it doesn't mean I'm going to pray a curse over you. I'm going to pray all this other hope. You know, that's not the spirit. That's a, that's a familiar spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. The way the Holy Spirit tells you to pray, even for your enemies, is, 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 is against your flesh and carnal nature. People can be praying and still be praying in their flesh. You can be pray you can smile at somebody and then go behind the door, Lord, make sure they drop this, make sure they lose this, make sure they uh, in the name of you because they touched not my anointing. Do my prophet on. That is a fleshly prayer, but you're praying but and then also you're praying a spiritual prayer, but you're not praying a godly prayer. You're praying and then familiar spirits will get, well, spirit or spirit will pick that up all right. It'll be a familiar spirit. And it's a form of witchcraft that you're doing. When you're using the word of God to go and pray negative things over people or believe negative things over people, you love the sinner, but you condemn the sin. Amen. And God knows your heart. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. Amen. But, good, but, but the good news is this right here. It says here, uh, uh, verse four here. He says, for the weapons of our war, for, for, for our, though the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down arguments and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. What does that mean? That means that guess what? I don't just because because I don't handle my problems in the flesh does not mean I'm helpless. Because I don't handle because I handle my problems in the spirit. That means just like the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. When I'm living by faith, I'm going to handle it God's way, and that is a spiritual principle. Turn the other cheek is handling things in the spirit. Believe in God to pay your bills off rather than stealing from people is the way to handle it in the spirit. Being quiet and stepping back and allowing God to fight your battles is handling things in the spirit. Bible didn't, God didn't tell us not to wrestle. He didn't tell us not to wrestle, or he didn't say that the weapons of our warfare, um, um, he didn't tell us not to make war. But he said that your weapons are not carnal. You don't deal in your flesh. You use the love weapon. You use the meekness weapon. You use the gentleness weapon. You use the weapon of the word of God. You use your faith as a weapon. Not against a person, but against a situation. If you got a supervisor that, that, that's not helping you out, not giving you a raise, and you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing, you're faithful, and, and they're trying to hold you back so that they can look better and not give you the credit, what you say is, Lord God, if they're trying to condemn you in front of other people and misrepresent you, then you condemn the words. You condemn the actions in the name of Jesus and say, Lord God, I think that promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west, but it comes from you. 
That's spiritual. Amen. So you're fighting. Guess what? Guess what? God, why does God want you to fight your warfare spiritual? And what does this have to do with fighting the good fight? Because a lot of the warfare is in your mind. It says bringing every thought into captivity. Those thoughts in your mind are saying that so-and-so doesn't love you or so-and-so, uh, uh, your boss doesn't like you or you can't, you're not smart enough to do this or you can never lose the weight or you'll never get healed. Those are weapons. Those are spiritual weapons. So you need to fight a spirit with a spirit. The enemy is a spirit and what's happening while you're losing is because you keep trying to fight that spirit that's behind your boss, that's behind your children, that's behind your money, is that behind your lack. You're trying to fight it in the flesh by slamming the bills down or cussing somebody out or, 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 or yelling at your kids, but it's not them, it's a spirit behind them and that spirit knows that it'll keep winning, that evil spirit knows it will keep winning as long as you keep arguing with your child or arguing with the bill collector. So you got to fight them in an area that's more effective, which is a spit with your spirit realm. So you use the word of God. You speak the word of God. You declare the word of God. You believe the word of God. You begin to pray the word of God. When you pray, it's not like you pray, Father, I thank you for delivering. Thank you for help. No, whenever you pray, you got to pray the word. You got to use put some scriptures in the word. Father, I thank you that I'm healed for, for, for your word says you sent your word and you healed me. Lord, I thank you that, that, that I am delivered from this disease, Lord God, for he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And then you got to slow and say, look, I put my faith to this I, because Jesus says when I pray, believe it, pray believe that I receive. So Lord God, as I'm praying, I believe that I receive. That is an effectual prayer. That's an effective prayer because it's a spirit-based prayer because it's a word-based prayer. So I know this is going to be a short message today because I'm already into my takeaways. So let's go to takeaway one. The first thing you got to know about warfare-based prayer is you've got to begin to cast down negative thoughts with the word of God. So number one, cast down negative thoughts. We Number one, we cast down negative thoughts with the word of God. Look at your neighbor and say, the war is not out here. The war is in here. And if you can cast those negative thoughts down and put the word of God there, then you'll know how to respond to the world outside of your head. Number two, never fall for the trick of the enemy to handle things yourself. What the devil wants you to do is handle the problem yourself. I think we talked about that last time in the arm of God. He wants you to go out there and go to court yourself. He wants you to go out there and, and fight your, hit somebody yourself. He wants you to go out there and handle it in your flesh. And if you are going against the will of God, you're going to have to handle it in your flesh. Because he's not going to help you. The Bible says this, it says, it says, first, submit yourself to God, do it God's way. Find out if that's God's will for you anyway to do that. And what's happened a lot of times, you're pursuing something, you fooled yourself into believing it's God's will for you to fight. And God says, that ain't my will, that's why you lose it. You fight me. I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell you to get that job. I didn't tell you to marry that joker. I didn't tell you to go over there and spend that money on that car. Now you're laying hands on the bills. And I didn't even tell you to go get the car. A lot of times what we do is we convince ourselves that what we want is what God wants. And many times it's not the case. The Bible says this. It says this is a lot of times we're chasing riches that many of us are ensnared. Or pierced through with many sorrows. Because guess what? We're picking something out that God didn't ordain for our lives. Look at your neighbor and say, wait on God. So you're casting down these thoughts and imaginations. And guess what? It's not enough to cast the thoughts down. you got to replace them with the word of God. Amen? Number three. When you're praying, slow down. Slow down when you're praying. Slow down. I know, oh, Father God, I thank God for it. In the name of Jesus. And I call on him. 
slow down so that you make sure that you're incorporating the word of God in there and you're mixing it with your faith. You need to slow down and, 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 and let the spirit of God tell you what to pray. Because God's not hearing just your prayer. He's hearing what the prayer that needs to be prayed at that particular. See, he's not just answering it because you prayed it. He's answering because it's right for you right then. And your prayer is a gate or it opens the gate to that blessing. Amen. That's number three. Number four, when you pray, you've got to be forgiving. You've got to forgive other people. You've got to release other people from what they've done. No matter how horrible it is, the enemy's trick is to keep you where you are in that place, rolling over the offenses, uh, 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 telling people your problems. You know, you're still mad after 10 years. You still, Johnny left you and you're still mad because he went out with your cousin. You know, Johnny been gone 15 years. You still where you are. Got the same shirt you had then. Got them same old pictures. Put them pictures down and move on. Move forward. Forgive. Y'all look at Johnny's picture and say, Johnny, you're a bad booger, but I forgive you. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to deal with you now. That's what you need to say. Amen. You've got to forgive. Guess what? Guess what? I'm going to tell you a secret. Everybody gets hurt. Everybody's let down. You're not, don't let the enemy fool you into believing that your hurt and your pain is so unique. Jesus forgave us and we got him crucified. He had to come down from heaven to get crucified. And the, and the, and the man that he created, he looked down and said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Now, if you haven't suffered like Jesus, you have no reason not to forgive. Jesus took our, all of our excuses away. Amen. Forgive. Forgiveness is the next part of spiritual warfare. Number five, I think we talked about that before, that a lot, some things can't happen by you praying by yourself. The power of agreement. Find somebody that believes in the vision God gave you and allow them to pray with you. Even you can be praying, they just be on the phone saying, I agree. The Bible says this, and I'll leave you with this. It says that a thousand, that one will chase a thousand and two will chase 10,000. And I should add a little note here, and the Holy Spirit's giving me that. Pray consistently. Pray consistently. And the dude put number six there. Consistency is the key to breakthrough. What does that mean? Don't pray one time. Nah, yeah, I don't need to pray. I don't need to repeat prayer. No, but you need to, prayer is a form of confession. And God and meditation. And God says, meditate on his word day and night. And you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. What does that mean? That means that you keep pray, pray. The Bible says also pray with, thank you, Holy Spirit. Pray without ceasing. Keep knocking. Though Jesus says this about a woman that wanted justice and, and, and there was a judge that was wicked. He didn't care about God or man, but he gave her justice because she kept, kept, kept. And Jesus says, how many of you that, that God love will God not have been speedily because they're persistent? Sometimes you're believing God, but you're not believing him enough. You're not putting enough pressure on it. Well, I don't like repetitive prayer. Well, that's not even the scripture. Well, it says don't repeat. It's talking about something else. It's talking about the Pharisees trying to do it to impress people. You got to keep certain things up before God. I prayed it one time and I walked away. Well, you are a super giant, aren't you? You are a faith giant. Because even Jesus prayed in the garden three times the same thing. So if you're better than Jesus had a repetitive prayer, how about that? Super, super deep. He wasn't talking about that when he talked about the Lord's Prayer. He was talking about, he repeated in context. He was talking about the Pharisees giving in public, trying to be seen. They were dressed up in public, saying how praising God in public. He says they already got their reward. Then he goes down and says no repetitive, repetitive prayers because he's talking about how they used to pray repetitive prayers, not praying to God, but they were praying all that life. Oh, Father, oh, uh, 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 Father, oh, Most High God, uh, 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 um, uh, the only God I know, you know, and all this other stuff. You know? If you take your presence from me, where else would I go? 
Oh, you know, all that stuff they say, you know, and don't even be praying to God. They just kind of quoting the same stuff every week with no power to it, no specific anything to it. Has nothing to do with you praying for your child um, every night. You better keep praying for him. Keep praying. Come on. The devil does not want you to keep pressure on your words, on your prayer. So he'll have you pray at one time and walk off. That's why they act right for like one day and then they keep, you need to keep praying without, keep pressure on it because it keeps the spirit coming. It keeps certain things coming. Some people need different types of prayers answered to get completely delivered. So your prayers are working, but one time when you're praying, God's opening up a door here and healing this, but that's not, they're not fully delivered. They just took one step. But when you close the door, they take two steps back because those demons come back. So if you keep praying and keep praying, they're taking steps towards deliverance every day. Pray without ceasing. The devil's biggest fear of you is you praying and not quitting. Be consistent. Keep the pressure on it. And he will use your misunderstanding of the word to get you to stop praying. So you pray one time. That's the problem. Keep that before God. Be, pay, be consistent. Don't even let heaven rest on it. Put pressure on it. There's an old acronym. It says push. It says pray until something happens. That's not really faith. Yes, it is. Because guess what? You're not going to keep doing something that you don't believe in. Think that's the Holy Ghost. Consistency is the highest form of faith. Because you're not going to keep praying and asking for something that you don't believe in. Well, if, 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 if you believe, you wouldn't ask more than once. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. You go to your boss and ask for a raise. Why? Because you believe they have the power to do it. Persistence, persistence. Now to thank your Holy Ghost. The prophet Elijah went, there was a drought in the land and he sent his servant back, what? Not one, not two, not three, not four, to go check on the rain, not five, to go check on the rain, not six, seven times before it started. He sent the servant back seven times before he even saw a cloud. Persistence. He went back and prayed the same prayer seven times. You got to begin the deal. In this season, you got to dig in and tell the devil that you're not going to give up on your children, on your house, on your job, on your career. If you got to keep praying the same prayer, if you got to keep praising the same thing, if you got to quote the same scripture, but you're going to see it happen because you're not a people who's going to faint. Look at your neighbor and say, keep moving. Look at your neighbor and say, keep pushing. Look on the other side and say, try again. And look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to get weary. And if I do, I'm going to ask God for strength. But I'm going to keep praying this. I'm going to keep believing for my children. I'm going to keep letting that stuff come out my mouth. I'm not going to stop it. If I got to go to that prayer line every Sunday with Johnny's name on that ticket, I'm going to do it. I'm going to show heaven. I'm going to show hell. And I'm going to stay here until they take me out of this earth. I'm going to believe for Johnny until I hear something. How do you know that's true? Because the woman with the issue of blood pressed. She pressed. She pushed through. She kept knocking on that door. And there's another woman that Jesus called a dog. And she said that even the dogs get the crumbs. She kept, she was begging and pushing. To the point the disciples said, look, even with the woman with the issue of blood, shut her up. Look at your neighbor and say, keep crying. Look at your neighbor and say, keep believing. Look at your neighbor and say, knock again. I got to tell you something. That some problems are stubborn. You can outlive. You can out, baby. You can out pray your problems. You can out pray that sickness. Keep going. Yeah, you're taking a medicine, but don't miss a day of praying over that medicine and saying, I'm still healed. For those people that's going to dialysis or people that's going to go and they got heart problems, yes, God, thank God for the treatment. Thank God for the insurance. But every day, I got a friend that wakes up every morning. She, yeah, she thank God and she prays God um, for her healing. It's going to come too because she keeps doing it. Amen. We walk 
not after the flesh, but we walk in the spirit. A walk in the spirit is a lifestyle. A walk in the spirit is constant. A walk in the spirit is a one step in front of the other step. It's not a leap of faith. It is a walk of faith. It's not a run of faith. It is a walk of faith. Amen. I'm going to pray a special prayer over you today. I'm going to pray something over you, and I'm going to pray something that some of you need this, and some of you are having a little attitude about this message, and it's not because you're mad at the gospel, but you're frustrated, so I'm going to pray a prayer of strength over you right now, amen, and then we're going to um, uh, uh, get a call to salvation going, then we're going to pray finally. Heavenly Father, I pray strength over my audience. I pray strength over this congregation. Lord, give them strength. Strengthen them and encourage them, Lord God, that their labor is not in vain, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, that, that, that you said, let us not get be weary in Galatians 6, 9, in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not, Lord God. If we don't give up, cave in and quit. I speak, I speak healing and I speak strength over this congregation. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, if you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, it is time to stop playing. I know that a lot of you have been introduced to me by other people who know Christ. It is not an accident that you are listening to this broadcast now. So let's stop playing with God. You already know that you need to be right with God. And you've been playing. Sometimes you go to church and then you go smoke weed. That's that's fine. But let's go come all the way. I'm not saying it's fine to smoke weed. I, it's fine to come as you are and let God do the healing and deliverance. But but it, this is you might not be able to heal and deliver yourself. But God is not going to make you um, give your life to Christ. So let's do the part we can do. Amen. Your part, your key to deliverance, you being a better person, like you said, you're going to be a better mom, better dad, better girlfriend, better boyfriend, better husband, better wife, better son or daughter, better grandma or nana. The first step in that is you got to do what you can do first. This part, God leaves up to you. So let's go ahead and surrender our lives to Christ. Amen. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father. I come to you as a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and change my life. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Father, also, I'm asking that you send the Holy Spirit to fill me and then live inside of me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you mean it from your heart, God did not turn you away. He heard you. He does. The Bible says he doesn't hear a sinner's prayer, but he hears a prayer of repentance. He heard that prayer and he honored it because he will not deny his son Jesus. And because his son Jesus died for you and bled for you, he has a promise that he will receive whoever comes through that. You are a believer. You are born again right now. What I need you to do is continue to watch this broadcast. Get yourself a Bible. Invest in a Bible. That's the most critical investment you can have. Get yourself a Bible. And begin to read. You know, put some comments in the in the um in the comment section if you've got questions. And we'll connect. Amen. Go to our website at promisedlandministries.church promiseandministries.church and leave me a message there, okay? I love you. Let me go ahead and pray for the rest of the congregation. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I speak blessings. Thank you for giving us all strength. Thank you for sending confirmation today, Lord God, as we walk this great fight of faith. Lord God, we know that we're not doing the, 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 we're doing fighting, Lord God. We're throwing the rock, but you are the power behind the rock. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, that's Dr. Charles C. Lucas, Senior Pastor of Promise and Ministry, saying keep moving.